A lot of histamine triggers are in the diet. diet. Yeah. Right? And so we, we can have a low histamine diet. So what, what's a low histamine diet? Well, um, foods or, which... Or what actually are... Well, put, put it this way. What are the foods that have the highest histamine that we should be avoiding? Yeah. So, so basically, the way to think about it is bacteria produce histamine. So if you have food that's old, if you have food that's sitting in the refrigerator for a couple of days, guess what happens? The bacteria actually break down histidine, the amino acid, into histamine. So no leftovers for Leftovers, these exactly. Oh, Le- oh, exactly. Boy. Leftovers, oh, exactly. Boy, I live right. on leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe and, just like the next day. <laughs> and then fermented foods. Fermented foods are fermented by bacteria. Mm. So anytime we have food that's old or fermented, things like Parmesan cheese, uh, uh, yeah, aged uh, uh, meats, uh, et cetera, cured, cured meats. meats, et cetera, they have high histamine and that's part of the fermentation process. So and yet get, we talk about fermented foods being so good for you, like sauerkraut and, and kimchi and natto and miso and- Exactly. And, and this and is where this is where this and, is where these these really good foods in someone who has histamine intolerance is like putting gasoline on a fire. And they'll and they'll say, Well, I'm getting worse. It's like, well, no, you should be getting worse. These are good foods for you. No, you have histamine problems. But what is that saying? Was good for the goose isn't good for the gander, right? I, exactly. think, I think this is so so critical what we're talking about here, Todd, because functional medicine is personalized medicine. Absolutely. Yeah. It's precision medicine. And it's not only like medicine, it's precision nutrition. Yeah. So it's really important to understand that even though this way of eating may be great for some people with yeah. fermented foods and eating avocados and having you know, delicious shellfish. Bone and broth. Bone broth. I mean, That's another one. Right. We think all oh, these are great foods, but you might be killing yourself. <laughs> exactly. uh, of course, alcohol and beer and all that is a problem. Wine. But, but you know, we, we are, we're, uh, we're really here focused on what is right for you. Yeah. And I think dietary dogma really interrupts personalization um, yeah. and approach to nutrition. Absolutely. Some people- do great on vegan diets. Some people do terribly. Some people do great on keto and some people do terribly. Yeah. So there's no one size fits all approach. And what really frustrates me, Todd, and probably I imagine you too, is that, you know, there's all these people out there on the web and internet and promoting this and that approach and this and that diet, and they're not seeing patients. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the thing about seeing patients is it's incredibly humbling. If you've seen tens of thousands of patients you know, you you can't be dogmatic. Absolutely. You can't say, this is the way. You have to be vegan or you have to eat meat Absol- or yeah. you have to eat fermented foods. Or you ha- It's like, you go, wait a minute, everybody's different. Yeah. And what, what works for one may not work for another. Yeah, one man's food is another man's poison. That's right. And even good, quote, good foods. You know, we're talking about good foods. Yeah. And so I think I think this is a really important point, particularly with people who have histamine issues, which is a lot of people at yeah. some level or another, uh, they should consider trying a histamine-free diet. And also other other foods that we think are also great, maybe triggering histamine, like papayas and chocolate. Oh my God, chocolate, which I love, yeah. would be a terrible to get this condition. Yeah. Uh, dried fruit, certain nuts, food dyes, additives, you know, weight germ, weight germ yeah. is supposed to be health food, right? Yeah. Tomatoes, bananas, all these things may, may really cause increased histamine production. Yeah.